is up? Jason here and you are watching Super Nintendo Collection Quest. I'll be going over my recent Super Nintendo game pickups. I'll do a quick review and show a little bit of game footage of each of them and you will have a chance to win a free game for the system of your choice. As a kid, I loved my NES, but when I got my Super Nintendo, that was it. Great graphics, sound, and gameplay, I was hooked. Some of my fondest gaming memories are from playing some of the greatest RPG, adventure, action platform, and multiplayer games on the SNES. It is my goal to own every North American Super Nintendo game released. So, follow me on my quest to Super Nintendo completion. so let's get right to the games. This month I picked up number 567, Elite Soccer. Elite Soccer, released in 1994, is also known as World Cup Striker in Japan and Europe. It features simple but fast-paced gameplay, a lengthy password system instead of save battery, and the ability to customize your team. Change your skin color, hair color, uniform and name. Play indoors, outdoors, against the computer or with a friend. It's Elite Soccer, another cheap sports game. Number 568, STG Strike Gunner. Straight Gunner STG is another shmup on the Super Nintendo. One of my favorite things about this game is the two-player co-op support. You have options to change the difficulty or number of lives all the way up to nine. When you begin, you'll be prompted to select a secondary weapon from a pretty diverse lineup. Your primary gun has unlimited ammo, while your secondary has limited uses as indicated by the meter on the left or right, depending on whether you're player one or two you will occasionally pick up items that will refill your meter. The actual gameplay in STG is a bit monotonous. The background on the first stage is seriously just a forest texture that keeps repeating. Enemy placement and patterns are uninspired. When we finally get to stage two, it's more repeating forest, only with new music, but mostly the same enemies. Stage three now has a dirt background with a few new enemies, but it's reusing the music from stage one. Each time you change stages, you'll have to choose a different secondary weapon. You won't be able to choose the same secondary weapon more than once. This is kind of cool because it forces you to try out some of the other weapons, but it probably works best in two player mode. One person can choose an awesome secondary, while the other person saves it for the next stage. Overall, this is not the greatest shooter, but if you just want to blast a bunch of enemy ships with a friend, give it a try. And number 569, Captain Novelin. This is another one of the educational diabetes games, only I would say this is the worst. Captain Novelin is a game designed to teach children about managing diabetes. This particular game is sponsored by the makers of Novelin brand insulin. On first playthrough, the game feels very clunky and it seems as though you have no attack moves. The game is frustratingly difficult as you try to dodge every enemy that quickly appears on screen while trying not to overeat. Eventually, we figured out that you need to press down on the directional pad while you are above or nearly on top of the enemies in order to stomp them out. Speaking of enemies, many of them are just downright disturbing. Learning the stomping technique makes the game significantly easier, but still has a bit of a learning curve due to very poor play control. With that out of the way, the main goal of the game is to collect only one of each of the food items that your nutritionist plans for you. Eat too many and your blood glucose will be too high. 
At the end of the stage, you will check your glucose level and take the appropriate dose of Novolin. All right, number 570, The Legend of Mystical Ninja. So I wasn't really expecting much from this game, mainly because I never really heard anything about it. I sat down and started playing this with friends and was actually pleasantly surprised with it. Legend of the Mystical Ninja has a wacky Japanese vibe going on. Some of the characters and scenarios in this game can be pretty silly, but in a good way. There's even a tanuki proudly sitting on his gigantic balls. The actual core of this game is pretty fun too. First of all, it supports two-player co-op, and you know I love me some co-op games on the Super Nintendo. Along the way, you'll collect money, which you can use to buy upgrades like faster running shoes or better weapons and health items. There are also gambling shops and lots of other fun places to explore. The game features a password system to resume your progress, however the passwords can be quite tedious, but it's still better than nothing. Overall, it's a fun, quirky game that you can even play with a friend. And finally, number 571, Super Punch-Out. This is a game I played a lot as a kid, and I really like this game. Um, I'm glad to have it back in my collection, and I'm actually kind of surprised it took me this long before actually obtaining this, but it is a game that's been kind of pricey, and um, I just haven't found a good deal on it, or usually game stores or one of the flea markets and stuff like that are usually picked over of like good titles like this. So. Um, finally, adding it to my collection, and uh, I'll be able to play it again. Super Punch-Out! is really the perfect 16-bit sequel to the original 8-bit Punch-Out! This game maintains the feel of the original while adding all of the 16-bit polish and features we've come to expect from the Super Nintendo. One of the things that makes the Punch-Out! series so much fun is learning each of the characters' quirks, learning their tells, their weaknesses. Each character in the game is a fun and interesting challenge. Aside from the upgraded sound and visuals, one of the best improvements is the save data. Up to eight different people can register their names on your game cartridge. Then there's a shared leaderboard, so you can compare your times against your friends and family, or you can just try to beat your old scores. There are four different circuits to compete in, each with four opponents you must defeat within a certain number of tries. To unlock the final circuit, you must have passed the first three circuits with zero losses. Fortunately, you can replay any of the circuits separately until you have zero losses in each. Super Punch-Out! is simply a joy to play. It is so much more fun than the original, and I did have a lot of fun with the original. Now it has the save data, records, and upgraded graphics and sound. Playing this game again makes me want to get Punch-Out! on the Wii, which I still haven't played yet. So that makes five games I've added to my Super Nintendo collection this past month. I'm currently up to 571 games and have got just a little over 150 more to go for a complete North American collection. So we're getting there. Um, but now onto the game giveaway. So last month's game giveaway contest winner is Adam Brown. Congratulations, send me a private message. Let me know the address you'd like the game sent to and let me know the system you would like the random free game for. And I will get that out to you. To enter the next game giveaway, all you have to do is be subscribed. So subscribe if you aren't already. Leave a comment below in this video and give the video a thumbs up. I will pick a winner in next month's Super Nintendo Collection Quest video. All right, congratulations again to the winner and thank you for watching. I will see you guys later.